the horror, the viral video of Katy Perry's eye malfunction. The viral clip in question that I saw and I saw many people commenting on was not the full video. In the full video, it is clear that what is happening to Katy Perry's eye is probably some sort of paralysis or it could be as a possibility. Katy Perry practiced quite a bit to perfect a weird eye glitch. I really don't think that's the case. But let me get the gist of it. Here's a story many of you may have heard. Katy Perry's on stage. You can see her there and she's got like one eye drooped all the way down and one eye open. And then she like presses her temple and her eye opens before glitching and closing. She presses again. Her eye opens up. Everybody has an idea as to what's really happening. And the big conspiracy theory is that she is suffering from Bell's palsy due to the vaccine with the Hodge twins tweeting that Katy Perry's got that Pfizer eye. Now, I'm not saying the Hodge twins are actually saying she's suffering from Bell's palsy or anything like that. I think it's a joke about Bell's palsy. And I want to make sure I point that out. One of the big dismissals here is that by simply making a joke about Bell's palsy, you're implying Katy Perry actually got Bell's palsy. No, 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 no. It's it's joking about her eye drooping and then making fun of Bell's palsy, I guess. Either way, there is a longer video that has been surfacing. There's like a shortened version which shows her eye like half closed. And now we've got all of the conspiracy theories in the world and none of them make sense or are correct. I have no idea what to tell you, but I can tell you this. It's not Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy does not make your eye like work like normal and all of a sudden just close. Bell's palsy makes the muscles droop and and they're paralyzed. So your eye is half closed and you can't smile. That ain't it. So I want to take a look at the video and I want to talk about it because I'm going to debunk everything. It is not eyelash glue. Okay, look. I don't know definitively anything. It could be Bell's palsy. It could be eyelash glue. It could be a performance. It could be Botox injury. It could be a nerve disorder. And it could be wonk eye. That's what she calls it. Katy Perry claims she has wonk eye. But none of these things stand up to scrutiny. So I can only say I got no idea what it is. But I've I've been looking at this video since yesterday. We didn't talk about it anywhere. A lot of people are already talking about it. But I'm going to go through debunking everything everyone claims that it is. Here's the story from The Sun. Katy Perry's eye leaves fans horrified and thinking she suffered paralysis live on stage. I think, um, I, I, you know, I think it's a muscle spasm. Uh, the, the, the best thing I can probably think of is a, is, is a cramp, a muscle spasm. She's doing this performance. She's probably sweaty. Maybe she's been drinking. Muscle spasm makes the most sense. I don't know. I think she's like straight edge. So maybe that's not true. The Sun says supporters were left fearing The 38-year-old pop star had suffered from facial paralysis during her Las Vegas residency. Here we can see some photos of it. Okay, you know what? Let me just jump to this. From Majid Nawaz. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the video. Let me zoom in quite a bit. This is a slightly longer video than what many people are sharing. And so I want you to watch. So what we're seeing, I'll describe it for those that are, are, her eyes are both open totally normally. Now, all of a sudden, full stop, at around the six-second mark, she starts twitching both of her, like both of her eyes, like something's going on. And then very slowly, her right eye just slowly closes completely. When you wink, you have to, you, you have to compress all of your facial muscles. So it's really hard to keep one eye perfectly open. There was that actress. Do you guys ever see Arrested Development? The, the woman who played the mother in Arrested Development had that perfect wink where she could like close her eye perfectly without crunching her whole face. But this is what happens with Katy Perry. Her eye is totally down and one is totally open. Very slowly it closes. Now, the reason I want to talk about this, everybody I see sharing this video where her eye is already half closed. Then I see all these women being like, oh, it's clearly eyelash glue. And I'm like, yeah, it probably is eyelash glue moving on. Then I see this video, which is longer, and you can see your eyes are open and then one just slowly goes down. But here, we'll keep watching. She touches her face. What she's doing likely is pulling the skin back, pulling on the muscle. It then closes right away. She ignores it. It's stuck. She then pulls it back again. It opens up and then blinks asynchronously with the rest of her face. Make even more noise for my band. Make even more noise for my band. Majid Nawaz is implying this is Bell's palsy. It is not Bell's palsy. If I were to make a guess, I would say not 
Bell's palsy. Possible, but I don't think so. In it, he says, receipts, BMJ, this is the, the British Medical Journal, I believe it stands for, a patient who experiences two facial palsies, one after the first and another after the second dose, strongly suggests that Bell's palsy is linked to the Pfizer vaccine. So we've seen many reports showing that Bell's palsy is a side effect. Now, as horrifying it is, Bell's palsy is temporary. I would strongly encourage anybody to go talk to a trusted medical professional. Don't take any medical advice from me, as I often say. And make sure you trust your medical professional. I I say it every time. It's no excuse to be like, Tim, I don't trust my doctor. And I'm like, well, don't tell me. Go find a doctor you do trust. I clearly did. Joe Rogan clearly did. Come on, it's possible, guys. Talk to a medical professional. Anyway, I don't think it's Bell's palsy because I've got got a bunch of things I got to go through. I don't think it's Bell's palsy because, uh, let me see here, Justin Bieber. When Justin Bieber had Bell's palsy, it's, it's what happens is your eye stays open. You can't close it because it's paralyzed. And so you got one eye open and you got your like, so, so I don't think it's Bell's palsy, but let's, uh, we'll, we'll, so here's the video. Let's take a look at this. Let's start with this one. Bit Butter on Twitter says, guys, you can't correct Bell's palsy by pulling on your cheek X. You can correct, you can sometimes correct stuck eyelashes by pulling on your cheek. So let's pause and address this. In this clip with 8.2 million views, this is why I'm saying there's a full video. Her eyes already closed. Eight point, this, is what, this is the one everyone's watching. You know, you got to watch the full video. Her eyes already closed, and you can see people think it's a stuck eyelash. When you watch the full video, her eye is totally open, and it just slowly droops down like something's wrong. Botox, maybe? Bit Butter says, okay. Katy Perry's right eye is her wonk eye. This is apparently well known among fans. This now seems to me uh, the most likely explanation. Wrong, good sir. Do a cursory image search. Wrong. And I can prove it. Again, I have no idea what's wrong with her eye, but I can debunk all of these things. I can debunk all of them. Katy Perry reveals wonk eye details on American Idol. Let's slow down. Go back to the beginning. First, this video that says what's happening with 8.2 million views is the most prominently shared video. The Majid Nawaz video has 127,000 views. I didn't see this one until early this morning. In it, you can see it starts with her eyes completely open, and then one eye slowly closes for like no reason. It seems very strange why that's happening. Her eye keeps blinking. She pulls on it. Muscle spasm to me makes the most sense. Stuck eyelash doesn't because her eyes are open and then it slowly closes. That doesn't make sense to me. Now let's talk about Katy Perry's wonk eye in a story from 2021. Katy Perry was talking with a contestant on American Idol and she said, I have wonk eye. What is wonk eye? All right, here's an image, a very large image. You can see Katy Perry's left eye in this image is slightly closed and her right eye is open. Now, I, 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 this is what I entertained. I said, she says her right eye is her wonk eye. Maybe these images are reversed. Notice that tattoo on her hand. I checked. The tattoo is on her right hand. That is her right hand. Her right eye is more open than her left eye. Someone tweeted in 2016, how can you be so cute? And Katy Perry said that wonk eye, though. So someone then asks, which side? And Katy says, right. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's my point. Katy Perry's right eye is more open than her left. Is that what her wonk eye is? It's more open? Apparently, she has eye drops because of this. Okay. Then explain to me how in this video, her eye slowly closes and it's her right eye. And then she pulls on it. Again, maybe what she means by wonk eye is weird muscle spasms. And that's why when her left eye was slightly closed, her right eye was open because of muscle, muscle contraction issues. You ever get a cramp? Okay, I, if, if, you, if you engage in strenuous physical activity, you get cramps, and you sometimes have to use force from other muscles to pull things. I have, uh, I get really bad leg cramps if I don't drink enough water or eat enough protein, and uh, I'll go out skating very, very heavily, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, it's like the cramp is so hard, I have to use my arms to pull my leg. Ooh, it's painful. I think she's sweating, she's performing, maybe dehydrated. Really simple answer there. It is creepy nonetheless. Creepy, creepy. What is lidtosis? Woman says botched Botox injection caused droopy eyelid. Let's debunk another point people are making about Katy Perry. 
Even I tweeted this. Maybe it's 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 a Botox thing. Botox does not cause this. OK, when you get droopy eyelid, it just looks like this. The lady's got a droopy eyelid. She got Botox in her forehead, probably. The, it's supposed to relax the muscles, paralyzing them so they don't wrinkle. And then, you know, initially when you get Botox, your face is paralyzed or whatever. And then the Botox lasts for like three to seven months, getting rid of wrinkles, but your face returns to normal after a little bit. Some people experience a droopy eyelid. A droopy eyelid is not a closing eye that gets stuck that you have to pull open. That's very strange. Is it possible that Katy Perry is a robot? I I guess. (laughs) It's possible that animatronics have exist to that point. Just, I would say, probably not based in reality. No. Robots maybe exist. Aliens, sure. Things that are physically possible, but just astronomically unlikely. Muscle spasm. All right, what's this one? Here we go. The tattoo on her arm. On her right arm, she got Sanskrit. There you can see the flower on her right arm. So I'm just pointing this out. Because when she says her right eye is her wonk eye, there's her right arm. Her right eye is open. And it's also her right eye that fails her on stage. So many people are wondering, could it be Bell's palsy? That's the next one. Okay, I already said no. Here's the story from June. Singer Justin Bieber has revealed he is suffering from facial paralysis after canceling shows this week. The 28-year-old said in an Instagram video that the condition is due to a diagnosis of Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Okay, so that wasn't even Bell's palsy. As you can see, this eye is not blinking. I can't smile on my side of the face. So there's full paralysis on that side of the face. Ramsey Hunt syndrome is when a shingles outbreak affects the facial nerve near someone's ears, say medical experts. Earlier this week, uh, Bieber's Justice World Tour, which began in February, announced three shows would be postponed. Let me just point something out to you guys. You got a lot of people talking about monkeypox. Remember monkeypox? You got a lot of people talking about Bell's palsy and Ramsey Hunt. Yo, you got to be careful, man. This kind of stuff can happen to you. It really, really can. Now, some people are concerned about Bell's palsy as a a side effect of the vaccine. We have this uh, Toronto woman develops Bell's palsy after COVID vaccine. Jennifer Gibson says she knew there might be side effects after getting the COVID-19 vaccine, but wasn't prepared when two weeks later she developed Bell's palsy. It was temporary. It is typically temporary. Talk to a trusted medical professional. Make sure you're getting proper risk assessment on any medical treatment you're doing. This woman, I believe she's a Canadian actress. I think it's the woman. And she's since posted photos where she's fine. Her face is back to normal. It is a known side effect. It is rare and it is temporary. But again, you got to make your own medical decisions, right? This is not what happened. Uh, let me let me play this clip. I wanted to talk about it responsibly. So I don't for those that are just listening, I'll explain it. People from Half her face vaccines. isn't moving. She has no control of it. Strangely, I, I... You'll also notice her paralyzed eye doesn't close. I, I don't really want to discourage them from getting this one. She blinks with one eye and the other eye just stays completely open. So perhaps the argument is what's really happening with Katy Perry is that she does have Bell's palsy. And when her eye closes, she's choosing to close it. And it's her left eye that won't close. But then her left eye blinks several times. I just don't see it. It does seem strange because she's like out of breath and huffing. Look at this. In the video, you see Katy Perry. And she's like. (sighs) And then her eyes like just. Oh, man, that seems so brutal. Imagine to us. Big fan. But I think you're absolutely wrong on this one. So you can see again. For those that are listening. Okay, whatever. Yeah, the woman, you know, eyes not working. Then we got this story. Let's go to this. Eric Clapton's anti-vaccine diatribe blames propaganda for disastrous experience. This story is from May 16th, 2021. Eric Clapton detailed his disastrous health experience after receiving the COVID-19 vaccine and blamed, quote, the propaganda for overstating the safety of the vaccine in a letter the guitarist shared with an architect, anti-lockdown activist. Clapton previously shared his thoughts, blah, blah, blah. He says, quote, About six weeks later, I was offered and took the second AZ shot, but with a little more knowledge of the dangers. Needless to say, the reactions were disastrous. My hands and feet were either frozen, numb or burning and pretty much useless for two weeks. I feared I would never play again. I suffer with peripheral neuropathy and should never have gone near the needle. But the propaganda to the vaccine was safe for everyone. In the letter, Clapton also discussed discovering heroes like anti-lockdown UK politician Desmond Swain, as well as similarly minded and some would argue conspiratorial YouTube channels. Okay, guys, 
I can tell you something really simple about this. We're seeing a lot of medical episodes. We'll put it mildly. We're seeing stories like Katy Perry and the theories around what's really causing it. You also need to understand with the hyper focus on these things, we are going to start seeing what we want to see. Keep that in mind. Talk to a medical professional. I'm not discounting any of the latest reports. Keep that in mind. What I'm saying is be careful about scale. It may be that one in a million people suffer from, you know, X syndrome or something like that. And most people don't pay attention. Then a news story breaks and they're like, X syndrome is everywhere. And all of a sudden you have 300 news stories and you're like, how is this happening? How are there so many news stories? And it's like, well, once the story became clickable, you have 300 million people in this country. You now have 300 news reports about people with this syndrome. So keep that in mind. When it comes to the COVID vaccines, you also need to keep in mind side effects are real. So again, make sure you trust your doctor. Ask them questions about your risk assessments and things that make you feel more comfortable. Make sure they know about your lifestyle, your allergies and all that stuff. But find a doctor you trust. Get, 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 get advice from the professionals. Here's the point. If you've got 70% of the population vaccinated and like 40% have received four doses of the vaccine, that means you're looking at a very, very large number. So let's just say we're looking at 70%. Yikes. So we're at what, 200 million, 210 million people potentially vaccinated and of them vac vaccinated several times. So let's add a big chunk and let's just say there's 300 to 400 million different administered doses or something like that because of the boos boosters and multiple boosters. Each and every one of those creates an opportunity for side effects. You're then going to see news stories pop up like crazy. This doesn't mean I am, I am not saying side effects don't exist. I'm saying they do exist. I'm saying some of these stories are actually scary. But I'm also saying it may be much more rare than you realize. It's just the news is making money off of it. And we are administering tons and tons of vaccines. That being said, I want to make sure it is very, very clear to everyone that you need to trust your doctor. I've talked about it quite a bit. There's a, you know, viral tweets being resurfaced from conservatives who were very, you know, very heavily advocating for people to get the vaccine. And uh, I've never been a fan of that. You know, be it ben, ben Shapiro said, what did he say? Like, get the vaccine dummies. Casey Neistat said, go get vaccinated. And my response always was, guys, I don't care from the left or the right. Go talk to a doctor. Then people responded to me saying, Tim, my doctor is dumb. And I'm like, why would you hire a dumb doctor? That's just ridiculous. I'm sorry. Come on. I found a doctor. Doctor gave me a bunch of medicine. Joe Rogan found a doctor. Doctor gave him a bunch of medicine. There are doctors. Like, it is not like every single doctor in the country is secretly a Biden voter or whatever, or a Democrat or whatever you're concerned about. So you can find a good doctor and talk to them and make sure you're getting adequate medical advice. I'll talk to you about your risks, the, the health assessment, modern up-to-date information. And if they can't answer the questions, yo, it's no harm, no foul to be like, doc, I don't trust you. That's the weirdest thing to me absolving yourself of the responsibility in finding a good doctor. This idea that you could go to any medical practitioner and be like, well, he's a doctor, therefore I'll just take his word for it. It's just like, no, come on, they're people. Look, you're going to go to Eric Clapton and ask him to shred some dragon force? I mean, I really, I, I, I'd be willing to bet that he probably could, you know, shred if he practiced, but he's not a dragon force guy. He's Eric Clapton. You know, he's, he's good at guitar, but he's not going to, maybe he does. Maybe I'm wrong. My point is, even among doctors, some are better than others. I mean, I'm, uh, even among guitar players, I meant to say. I know people who are uh, professional skateboarders. And I'm like, they're very good at skateboarding. And then you can look at the top tier, cream of the crop, best of the best, and be like, okay, those guys are way better. They're both still pros. So whose advice do you take? If you get a top tier pro saying, oh, you, uh, you know, nose grinds on rails don't exist. I'm going to be like, okay. This is actually, this is a really good example for anybody who understands skateboarding. For those that don't, I'll explain it. When uh, there's a trick on a skateboard where you ollie, you jump with the board and then land on the nose with your back truck in the air, like you're bouncing on the nose of the board with one truck grinding against the ledge or rail. It's called a nose grind. If you ollie and swing the back truck over so that the board is crooked, well, that's called an over crook. There are, top tier, there are top tier pros that claim you cannot do an overcrook on a rail. 
because they say when you try to nose grind, the board just falls into that position. They're completely wrong. And these are some of the best pros in the world. They're completely wrong. There's no logic to what they're saying. They're making an emotional argument about them not having the skills to pull the trick. It's, it's a funny example. For those, for those that are in you know, skateboarding, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The point is, there's a hard trick, which is doing a straight nose grind on a rail, and an easier version, bending the board so it balances more easily, which would be called an overcrook. Instead of just admitting they can't do the nose grind, they just say, nose grind doesn't exist. And I'm just like, bro, it clearly, or I'm sorry, they say overcrook doesn't exist. It is a nose grind. It's like, no, you're doing the easier trick. Stop. Stop it. You go to a doctor. They think they're the best in the world. They give you bad advice. Don't just immediately trust them. Go find a doctor and be like, here's how old I am. Here's how much I weigh. Here's my activity. And be honest. A lot of people weirdly don't want to answer doctor's questions. I always, I always find that very strange. It's like, do you smoke? And they're like, uh, no. It's like, just say yes. The doctor's there to give you medicine. Just say, yeah. Yeah, I drink smoke. I don't exercise. I eat Twinkies all day. If you do, admit it. And I will add too, it's funny that people are like, reticent to admit to doctors that they either don't like you go to the dentist like do you floss yes like no you don't just say no you don't the doctor can see your mouth dude it's the weirdest thing to me it's like you're gonna lie to your doctor bro i go to the doctor and i i I guess the issue is you clearly know what you're doing is wrong when you don't take care of yourself so you'd lie to the doctor and the doctor knows you're lying it's so dumb you go to your doctor should be honest uh i eat a lot of meat i eat a lot of fat and uh, that's true. And if the doctor says, well, you've got high cholesterol or something, I'd be like, huh, okay, well, you know, better figure that one out. Anyway, here's my point. The Katy Perry thing has lit up the internet with conspiracy theories. And you've got some people saying it's the vaccine, which I don't think it is. And you've got some people saying it's, it's eyelash glue, but I think the full video disproves that. It's simple, man. We don't know. And I got to say, I think it might be just be like a muscle spasm. She's huffing. She's wheezing. She's on stage performing. I bet she's out drinking or something. Or she's dehydrated. She's not taking care of herself. That's a reality, man. That stuff happens. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.